Good morning and welcome to the Thoughts for the Day on this 23rd day of May. The scripture for this morning comes from the first chapter of James and verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given to him. To read the Bible in a year, today we move on through 1 Chronicles chapters 19, 20 and 21 and John chapter 8, verses 1 to 27. The thoughts for the day? There will always be a part, and always a very large part, of every community that have no care but for themselves, and whose care for themselves reaches little further than impatience of immediate pain and eagerness for the nearest good. Maturity begins to grow when you can sense your concern for others outweighing your concern for yourself. There are some remedies worse than the disease. Well, we know that. That's good. <laughs> the motivational thought for today. Examine your past difficulties and understand the lessons that have been shown to you. On this day in 1785, Benjamin Franklin announced his invention of bifocal glasses. In 1934, on this day, American armed robbers Bonnie Parker and Clyde Barrow were shot dead in an ambush by Texas Rangers near Gibland, Louisiana. In 2019, more than 170 tornadoes were reported in a week in the United States of Missouri, Oklahoma and Iowa. Seven people were killed and widespread damage was caused. In 2021, 21 runners died in freezing conditions during an ultramarathon in the Yellow River Stone Forest Park, Yangsu province in China. The personal story of today, Love is a Package is the title. And the scripture comes from 1 John chapter 4 and verse 21. There are further scriptural references in 1 John chapter 4 verses 13 to 21. The scripture reads, And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God loveth his brother also. When we move into December, it's hard to believe the year is almost finished and Christmas is almost here once again. With the summer in Australia comes the cricket and the tennis, sporting events designed to be watched from the comfort of our lounge chairs during the Christmas holidays. While it's perfectly fine to be a spectator in front of our TV, our study so far shows that we can't remain spectators when we talk about God's love. It's true that we have witnessed his love in the life and work of Jesus Christ, But it's equally true that we must live out his love as well. This has been a repeated theme in 1 John. In fact, it's the only theme in life. Consider Jesus' summary of the law in Luke chapter 10 and verse 27, in which he was answering a question from a lawyer. Jesus confirmed that the following answer which the lawyer gave was correct. And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbour as thyself. And Jesus confirmed that that was a correct answer. Today's verse begins with the summary of the entire gospel message in verses 13 to 15. The greatest evidence of God's love is his sending of his Son. Even more though, he sent his Son as the saviour of the world, the one who neutralises and takes away sin, no one stands outside of this sphere. To acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God encompasses the entire gospel and every benefit and responsibility contained within it. This is the love of God for us, and we are to rely upon it, we're told in verse 16. But how do we rely upon the love of God? By basing our entire confidence to stand on God's love for us without fear on the day of judgment. That's in verse 17. 
Because we have already experienced God's love, we have no fear of punishment. Remember, we are acceptable before God because of what Jesus Christ has done for us, not because we are somehow good enough. If it were not for Christ's shed blood and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we would have no basis to stand confidently before him. But we rely on him and not on ourselves. And how is our love for God proven to be real? By loving one another, particularly the weak, those with the most needs. Love for God without love for men is a moral impossibility. The devotional thoughts for the day, the first is entitled, God Never Forgets Us. And the scripture comes from Hebrews 13, verse 5. And it's a short scripture. It says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. This promise took on a new meaning one windy night as I was asked to visit a dying woman with our fellowship. She had been coming to our meetings since she was diagnosed with incurable cancer. Her first meeting set the scene for the balance of her life. She and another young man, totally unrelated to each other, came to the front at the time for prayer. As it turned out, both were suffering from incurable cancer and both were at their first meeting. The young man demanded to be healed or he would never come back to the meeting. He died the following week. Alternatively, our sister humbly asked God to show her mercy and heal her. Over the following nine months, her condition stabilised. The cancer neither progressed nor retreated. She prayed every day for the Holy Spirit, and for a healing from her disease. The very day she received the anointing of the Spirit, her cancer resumed its deadly work. This leads me back to where I started. Shortly before her death, I was summoned urgently to see her. The disease had taken a heavy toll. Her memory had failed to the extent that she had no recollection of any events in the last 15 years of her life. Her husband kept encouraging her to pray, but she wouldn't. She had no faith in her previous religion. Her husband told her that I was coming to see her, but she could only remember her previous minister from before her memory failure. She wasn't keen. When I arrived, she didn't know who I was. Neither did she remember any of her fellowship of the previous nine months. She didn't even know what the Holy Spirit was. She was prompted to pray again, but she wouldn't. She was reminded of her anointing experience, but she couldn't accept it. Eventually, she was persuaded to pray, very much against her better judgment. Immediately, she spoke out in tongues as the power of the Spirit was free to do its wonderful work. Her memory returned and her confidence was regained. What a powerful testimony of the faithfulness of God. Even when our mind betrays us, the Spirit never will. She died soon after, but she was full of confidence, full of faith, and full of humble belief. The second thought for the morning is entitled, The Time of the Gentiles, and the scripture comes from Luke chapter 21 and verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations, And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Jesus knew the leaders of the people would never accept him. On the contrary, he knew that they would be involved in his judgment and crucifixion. He also knew what the future held. He knew that the Romans, the people whom the high priest had set their hope upon, would be the very ones to pilfer Jerusalem and destroy the temple. The high priests feared the Romans would come and take everything away from them if they acknowledged Jesus as the Messiah. Now this would happen anyway. What they feared was about to come upon them. Jesus prophesied about the great dispersion when Jews would be scattered among the nations. Gentiles would trample Jerusalem. The temple would lie in waste. The temple service would cease and the priests would disappear. Things deteriorated to such an extent that even the name of Jerusalem was temporarily changed. 
Surrounding fields were destroyed with salt and no Jew was allowed into the city. From the Mount of Olives, the place where Jesus had ascended to heaven, the people were allowed once a year to look longingly upon Jerusalem. From the destruction of the temple, Gentile powers clearly reigned in the city. But from temporary residences the world over, Jews voiced their longing to return to Jerusalem with every Easter time greeting. Next year in Jerusalem. Jesus spoke about the age of the Gentiles being fulfilled. The age of the Gentiles refers to the time during which various Gentile rulers would have political control over Jerusalem. One day this foreign rule would come to an end. This deliverance began in 1917 and the age of the Gentiles ended with the Jews returning to Jerusalem during World War I. Next, an even greater power shift will take place. Jesus return. The facts of the day. Plates carrying the continents migrate over the Earth's surface a few centimetres or inches per year, about the same speed that a fingernail grows. One year on Earth is 365.26 days long. One day is 23 hours, 56 minutes and 4 seconds long. The extra day in a leap year was introduced to compensate for the discrepancy in the Georgian calendar. A couple of uh, laughs for the day. In the traffic court of a large Midwestern city, a young woman was brought before the judge to answer for a ticket given for driving through a red light. She explained to the honour that she was a school teacher and requested an immediate disposal of her case so that she could get to school in time. A sneaky grin came over the judge's face. You're a school teacher, eh? he said. She replied, yes. Madam, he said, I shall realise my lifelong ambition. I've waited years to have a school teacher in this court. Please sit at that table over there and write, I will not drive through red lights 500 times. <laughs> In a murder trial, the defence attorney was cross-examining the coroner. The attorney said to the coroner, Before you signed the death certificate, had you taken the pulse? The coroner said, No. Did you listen to the heart of the deceased? The coroner said, No. Did you check for breathing? The coroner said, No. So when you signed the death certificate, you weren't sure the man was dead, were you? The coroner said, Well, let me put it this way. The man's brain was sitting in a jar on my desk. But I suppose it's possible that he could be out there somewhere practicing law. <laughs> the closing thought for today. Remember, everyone has a story to tell, and it is not always a happy one. Look beyond the outward man to find what lies within. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you've... Uh, Got some benefit from the thoughts for the day and that you will have a blessed day. We look forward to your company again tomorrow morning. Bye for now.